<sighs> so, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. My Milo is almost finishing, actually. This is like my fifth take, and yeah. I haven't done this in such a long time. But I'm gonna try again. Yeah. And yeah, my ugly face is back on your screens. <laughs> It's been such a long time since I recorded a video and I honestly am struggling to even put together words to introduce a video and do it properly. And yeah, I blame myself because Elaine told me to record this video so long ago. That's when we arrived. If you follow this channel, yeah, you do know that um, a couple of months ago we traveled to the Netherlands, came back uh, about a month ago actually. Yeah, about a month ago. And I had to do this video, I had to unpack and share with you guys what, you know, had happened there, what we've been up to. And now I feel that I've lost the fire of, you know, all the enthusiasm, all the things I thought about to talk about. But um, let's see if I can remember my experience there and what it meant to me this time around. Because I hadn't, what the hell? Yeah, I hadn't been... To the Netherlands in such a long time. I mean, even before I go into it, let me just start on a, you know, on a happy or, oh yeah, on a happy note. I want to say happy birthday to the twins. Your birthday is today. I'm going to record and upload the video today. So hopefully you guys catch it whenever you catch it. So yeah, we went to the Netherlands. And um, if you guys um, follow the channel you may have seen our video with the yeah, champions a couple of months ago or some few months ago talking about them leaving ghana and you know having a discussion about relocating and all those things where i was of the stance that i was ready to jump ship i was ready to leave ghana because so many things frustrate you here and it might be nicer to try a new environment and everything. So yeah, I, I, I when, when I was going to the Netherlands, um, when we were going to the Netherlands this time, um, part of the things that I wanted to do was to, you know, experiment or we, we were going to experiment and gauge, you know, what life or the lifestyle is there um, if we do want to move there at some point. So yeah, that's 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 the lesson. Oh, those are the lessons I've learned. What you know, you hear people post, or even family members or friends close to you when you ask them, you know, you want to visit or you want to come and live there, and they tell you don't do it. It's too difficult. You know, a brochure is a scam, and all those things that you hear. <laughs> well, they're not entirely true, and they're not entirely false. So what they don't tell you is what I hope that you know by the end of this video you may have you know grasped a few things or understood a few things because I'm I I'm going to break things down from the perspective of wanting to travel for holiday short stay in Europe or wherever you want to go it's not just Europe if you want to go to the Americas wherever it is travel has changed so I'm going to share my perspective and hopefully it informs you about how to go about yours if you decide to do it at some point so before we left of course you know you have to prepare and we didn't have such a smooth preparation because for one my passport wasn't you know up to date and i had to update it i didn't do it on time and then there was a delay at the passport office even though i paid for express i don't know why they put that tag on it yeah i'm just saying it wasn't express i paid for premium why 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 I, it, 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 it wasn't so we wasn't even sure that we we're gonna go because it was too tight and um, we had to work on the visa process and all those things before we could you know of course travel um, luckily for us we we're traveling on the family visa you know yeah we, we travel with the family visa because tourist visas are super difficult to come by because, of course, COVID is still in full swing. It's not leaving anytime soon. So it's really difficult to get visas nowadays for tourists, especially from our parts of the world. Now that, you know, when uh, COVID started, everybody in the West were like, you know, don't call it the Chinese virus and all those things. But Omicron came out, I mean, was not didn't come out. 
Omicron, South Africa, you know, told the world about the new variant that they had been experiencing, which didn't come from South Africa because other countries in Europe had already, you know, had it but never announced it. And now they're calling it the African virus to the point where, you know, some German newspapers have it over there. You know, there's not even subtle discrimination is there. So, yeah, the world is changing with travel. So with tourist visas, it's going to be very difficult. Luckily, Ghana is not on the red list of countries that uh, can travel to places like Europe. So maybe you can, but it's still very, very, very you know, difficult. Even with VFS, trying to get an appointment was such a hassle. So we did get it. The good thing about traveling to um, another place or Europe with plane tickets, most airlines now allow for free cancellation at any time because you do need that to be a part of the documents that you pro provide before you travel. And so airlines, you know, you have to pr pr um, yeah, have a proof of your travel itinerary, a round trip that you will come back. So airlines have made it easy due to COVID that if you go and apply for visa and it doesn't work, you can easily just cancel and you have your money back. So that was a good thing. So we had to book. And <laughs> the funny thing about ours was that we, first of all, um, got the appointments very uh, late and immediately was like, yeah, come tomorrow when we finally were able to get it. So I had to, we had to get the documents and everything ready quickly. And then when we did get it as well, you know, in the waiting time before the visa comes, it was super close to the flight time. We literally got it like um, a day before we traveled. So we just packed and just left. So it wasn't a smooth thing. One thing that I've learned, please prepare properly, prepare in advance when you do get your visa so you don't have to rush through things. Another thing that I experienced um, while we're in Netherlands was spending, which I should have done before because obviously of, I didn't also, we're not also sure we're going to travel, like I mentioned. So spending over there, I mean, your country's currency is not, you know, com competing well in the world um, market. So one is to seven, one is to eight, depending on where you're going, one is to six. So you have to save up and know exactly how much you're spending. And I heard that some banks offer the service of a travel wallet, a card that you can use anywhere, um, depending on the currency that you put on it. And then when you spend, let's say $5, it's $5. If you spend 10 euros, it's 10 euros. So look into that before you leave, get your travel wallet, know exactly how much you want to spend in your holiday. If it's 3,000 euros, if it's, you know, 2,000, know that that's what's on your travel wallet before you move. It's important. I didn't do that. So anytime I bought something, paid something, I would get a notification from my bank and I'm like, hey, you know, I, I couldn't stop not converting the money anytime I bought something. So let's now go into the Netherlands. Breaking it into if you want to stay there versus if you want to visit. Because I did ask a lot of questions, you know, trying to see what it was, what it would be like. If you're gonna go on a tourist visa and just stay there, you don't know tourist visa and just go for holiday, short stay, and you don't know anybody there, you have to have proof of accommodation that you're gonna be in a safe place, that you can afford to be in that place for that long and take care of yourself the whole time. So your finances need to add up. Your bookings need to add up as well. So accommodation, if you are going for a short stay, say a month, it's easier if you're not as adventurous as we were, where we were doing city hopping because we wanted to see how the lifestyle is, you know, in all the cities that we visited to see possibly where we would like to stay if we should move to the Netherlands. So we did a lot of Airbnb hopping. Um, we were lucky enough to have one of Elaine's friends give us um, her apartment uh, to stay in the first week we were there. So that was a good thing for us. But apartments or houses in Europe in general, 
depending on where you are. If you want to be in the city, they're very tiny. They're very small. And although, I mean, they come with, you know, almost everything you may need, the water is running, the heater and all those things, it's also quite expensive. So if you're going to book a place, make sure you have it, you know, a longer stay, which is technically cheaper because if you do short stays, you realize that if you bounce from place to place, you're going to end up spending a lot more. So if you can have a place for a month, it's going to set you off anywhere between 1,000 to and up, and up, 1,000 euros and up for a month. That's the average you will get for Airbnb for the month, depending on how nice or not the place is or how close it is to the city. And if you're a tourist, you would want to be close to the city so that it's easy to reach things. You don't want to go somewhere that, you know, you have to travel a lot to the city because transportation will also F you up. That's it. You spend a lot on transportation. Something's got to give. If you want the comfort of being in the city so that you can just cycle or walk to places or you want to be far from the city, pay less and spend more in transportation. Transportation is very efficient in the Netherlands. You have your bicycles. You know, the cars are there. The roads are impeccable. Trains work. Trams work. All those things work. But if you're going to be commuting every single time, you realize that over time that it's not the, the cheapest thing, especially if you know you want to visit other cities, you know, to check them out. We lived in Utrecht and we that was our base ground. And we visited people in Amsterdam, The Hague, Rotterdam, and all those places. And if you're going to be going back and forth a lot, for example, from Utrecht to Amsterdam, it's 80 euro 20 one way, so it's a 1640 to 1650, almost 17 euros. Um, for, for a round trip and if you're going to be going there five times a, a week you're spending almost a hundred or yeah close to a hundred euros and if your <laughs> your conversion is not turned off in your head then it means that you're, you're seeing almost 700 Ghana cities on transportation in a week and then you think that okay I'm going to be here for four weeks times four transportation alone you're going to be spending you know almost 3,000 Ghana cities or more depending on the trams and all those things that you do so that's about moving around and finding a place to stay let's go to food um, food in the Netherlands is available is affordable if you're going to be cooking that's why I was you know suggesting that you stay in a place for long so that you make it a bit of your you know own safe space you can cook in your house or your Airbnb because cooking at home will save you there's food at home it's very important it will save you a lot not to say that don't eat out because you're on holiday. You also need to chill. You need to relax. You need to go out, have a few beers, meet people. Even if you're by yourself as a group, go out, eat out, check out street food, restaurants and all those places. Nice food. But don't make it a thing that you're doing every single day. You will go broke. Because if you compare how much you spend outside versus if you do cook a lot at home and get your drinks in bulk and everything and you know, your juices, your milks, everything at home, just like you would live then you realize that there's a, a huge you know gap in food at home versus eating out so eat out experience the different you know um, foods or from different cultures because there's a wide variety there's almost everything there another thing i noticed about eating out is um almost no not almost all the chinese restaurants i went to don't take visa with money and carrying money around and your card. They don't take visa. So if you're gonna go Chinese, have some cash on you. They won't take visa if you don't have a, a, a Dutch bank card. I don't know what the issue is. They only take cash or Dutch bank cards. So if you're gonna do Chinese, they don't do visa. That's one thing I realized. So that's about eating out in the Netherlands, moving around, traveling. The cities are beautiful. Um, there are a lot of museums, there are a lot of uh, places that you can visit. Um, do a bit of your research, plan your itinerary well, and then know where you're going. If you have free time, take walks. It's nice. Depending on the time you go, we were in, uh, we went there in the autumn, so it was quite uh, cold, although I wasn't exactly cold, cold as even Elaine was, but it was quite cold. So you need to also think about your clothing. If you're going in the summer, and you are, you know, in a good place where you can wear 
your regular clothes but even summer is not exactly like warm warm like here or humid so that is also something you should know so food transportation and uh, stay i think i've covered that for your holiday these are some of the things that you should know now if you want to live in the netherlands i was asking questions as a freelancer as somebody who might want to move there at some point because well my partner is dutch and at some point in our lives would want to stay there so i was asking questions about you know especially that's also the reason sorry that's also the, re also the reason why we were city hopping and doing more airbnbs because we're checking our living standards and living um, lifestyles in other cities so we stayed in the hague for a little we stayed in rotterdam for a bit we were in utrecht for a bit all those cities that we were checking out what it is so for me as a freelancer there is a lot of opportunities freelance filmmaker photographer there's a lot of opportunities um, out there but there's also barriers to these opportunities one being the language one being even the, the general lifestyle that you have to you know get used to um there's also you know the, the the one about being native versus being a foreigner is there whether you like it or not you might be so good at what you do but if you're if you're going to be vying for something with um somebody who's a native chances are they'll get it before you it's there it's something you should know um, unless you're applying for something that is minority led and specifically you know in your zone then yes but there's a lot of opportunity out there for freelancers um, especially those who work in tech I mean if you work in tech you can work anywhere in the world so you can make your money and you can live wherever you want to live um, amenities in terms of um, water internet and everything is crisp so you are good to go if that's what you do but for me i had to um, get used to the fact that if i ever have to live there i need to get to meet people form a tribe find opportunities and build everything from scratch the creative scene over there is still um, predominantly i'm going to use the word white or caucasian um so yeah it's not you know mainstream media is not you know very balanced or yeah that's what i'm going to say so if you want to create films yes there are um, grants and available funding and everything so yes those opportunities do exist but you should also know that you, you, you have you have to make friends in all these places to try and find your way around do not i repeat do not leave your country to another country if you don't have you know freelance skills and try and go and find work there with your your current degree or masters if it's not masters from there and if you don't have work experience for example with uh, international organizations you know if you have work experience with international organizations you find work i mean you have experience working there and here you've been in and out you know so if you want to relocate permanently then that might be a tad easier than you getting out from here with your business degree from here saying that you're going to stay in the netherlands or stay in europe and find work from there because uh, it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way but whatever it is i'm saying that find the opportunity here if you're not somebody who can easily find your way around as a freelancer find the work here apply here get your opportunities in check before you leave know that when you go you're going to work maybe the next week or next two weeks you're relocating properly like an expat to go and work please be aware of that and even with that when you do go you still have to now get used to the culture get used to the people get used to the language and try and also find your way to belong to be in there so it's not the easiest thing especially if you go alone and if you go with a partner you, there's also the angle where you may become over-reliant on your partner because 
they will technically be the only person you know and are comfortable with so that is also probably going to take a toll on your relationship so there's so many angles to this and when people say that yeah it's a scam it's too difficult don't come they may be right people have survived but they need to tell you the truth about most of these things that you may face um, you pay a lot of taxes as far as i know if you're a resident and the good thing is your taxes you actually see the work of your taxes the roads are impeccably good transportation i mean there's trains there's traps they're all working efficiently connected and you can understand why a lot of dutch people are you know they have they make a lot of plans they they they, they are a bit uh too structured if you put it that way that they know that today i'm doing this that that i know they plan their weeks their months all those things because if if you don't do that and you just are like a desk about how you do things you realize that you end up spending more you are running around like a headless chicken you don't know you know all those things count all those things count that's what i've noticed so if you know you have meetings here social life all those things they put them in the plan so that they know that you're spending this much they know they have to go here this is what it takes you know they factor all those things into it so that they can make sense of such an environment which is so structured and efficient that if you don't follow those you know principles you're lost so if there are routes and you are in the grass <laughs> then you know you're not moving as fast as everybody else so yeah this is this is, this is basically what i wanted to share about uh, my trip to netherlands and visiting or living there or anywhere in europe um, i think one thing i forgot is if you're going to be visiting other countries uh, in the schengen area you have to indicate on your visa forms that you'll be traveling to other places and now with covid you have to um, kind of explain what you're going to be doing there when you're going there but initially you just tick um, multiple entry and that was it because now every country will ask you ah before i go before i go yeah um covid uh vaccination cards are very important but we also realized that it didn't work as in most um restaurants and public places that were enclosed will ask you for a european qr code that you need to scan and to be able to sit indoors and we went in the autumn it was very cold you know so if you, you want to sit indoors for the most part and you're not allowed to sit indoors if you don't have a european qr code there's a way around it but it's also not very efficient in my opinion um whereby you can test you can do free uh antigen tests and then you get a, a 24-hour qr code I don't know if it will change in time where if you're traveling and you book your ticket and you book you know the time uh, maybe part of your uh, the things that you know they will give you would be a temporary maybe a one month qr code a european qr code for your stay so that if you're going to be going to places you can easily show and go there i don't know if that's going to happen but it was very difficult um going to places sometimes we have to email them in advance that we would be coming and we have a Ghanaian uh, vaccine card is it okay to show up it's proof but it's not a European one some restaurants are like yeah it's cool just as so long as you can prove with your passport that this is you this is your vaccine we're good some places will be like nah you know we're not really sure so we, we had we had um, those issues as well yeah, so that's one thing also to note when you're going. So I don't know if it will change. But note all these things before you leave, both for traveling, for short stay, and for relocating. You need a lot of patience and planning because you're going to be starting over completely. And it will take you about two, three years, if not five, to catch your breath get used to and settle before you start thriving you know 
and becoming, you know, living your full potential. So, I, yeah, I was in a hurry to leave, but now, not, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore after learning what I've learned in the last uh, month. Now, I think it's best to visit as frequently as possible if you can afford it. You know, meet new people, make new friends, um, acquaint yourself with the environment more before you make the jump. That's what I would say. So yeah, this is a video I had to make. I hope I captured everything as much as I wanted to. Do let me know in the, the comments below what you think. Um, if you also live in the Netherlands and uh, you want to add more to what I've um, talked about, please. Um, these were my experiences. If there's something I got wrong, you can maybe give a better perspective as well. I hope I did good with my uh, <laughs> comeback video uh, after such a long time. I hope you have a great, great December. Um, enjoy every bit of it as much as you can. Hopefully, we'll sign off the year better than I have done you know, in such a long time. Maybe I'll I have a film to upload. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that on my other channel, Asitna, which I'll leave a description, a uh, link in the description for you to also check out Asitna. So I'll upload those videos, There's some vlogs that may come, maybe more couple videos as you guys have already set the agenda for this channel. And yeah, hopefully 2022 is... Uh, much better year on YouTube and everywhere else. On that note, I'm rambling and that's it from me. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Yeah. I mean, it's cold. Bye-bye.